everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite Linux flavored curly fry, Gardner, the Linux gamer. That's a good comment. I like that comment. This video is brought to you as always by my gracious Patreon contributors, including the support of Matt Dancer. Matt, your support is truly humbling. So today we're talking about the Librem 5 phone. Uh, I, once every other month, I like to do a video about the Librem 5 progress uh, because it's just super exciting to me. Now, a couple times a month, they will release some information about the, the Librem 5 phone over at PURI.SM. Uh, that's their website. Pretty cool uh, domain hack. What's up? Domain hack. And then once a month, they'll do like a Librem 5 uh, update where they just kind of go over all the things that... Uh, are going on with the Libra 5 and uh, they talk about it and it's like a one long post and it's it's generally pretty awesome to read. Heather Ellsworth is, is a really great project manager like she posts a, a bunch of stuff on on the blog here and uh, I really like reading her posts and the June software update is no exception. Uh, I am very, always pleased to see what is going on with the with the updates for this uh, device because well I am a backer and uh, I can't wait to get my hands on the final um, device and uh, so let's just talk about some of the things that they're doing uh, some of the updates that have happened over the last the 30 ish days and uh, you know what what we can expect also Quake 2 <laughs> so Lib Handy Lib Handy is a library that facilitates uh, uh, rendering convergent applications across multiple d uh, devices and screen sizes. So if you have a, uh, uh, you know, a GTK app uh, and you want it to run on a desktop and you want it to run on the Librem 5, you can uh, use libhandy and it will basically like automatically fill the space um, for, for your screen with the appropriate um, styling and I think that that's really cool now there's some video of it on their website so you can see that like when you start to resize the the application window it'll actually move the icons from an inline uh, perspective to more of a block type where it's you know stacked and then once you get to a certain uh, width of the window it actually move all of the options down to the bottom of the screen from the title bar um, that's such a handy little feature and uh, I'm I'm pretty excited to get my hands on on one of these uh, applications here. I'm just so excited to have, you know, the Libra 5 in my hands and then be able to put it in a dock and plug it into a TV or a screen or something and just be able to like, oh yeah, it's a desktop computer now. And then I can pull it off the dock and answer a call. I think that that sounds really cool. You can also see that the, uh, the preferences window in GNOME Web is using the Lib Handy module. Also to follow up on GNOME Web, which I called it Epiphany in my last video, a bunch of people gave me crap for that. The package is called Epiphany, so I mean GNOME Web, Epiphany, it's all kind of the same thing. But uh, the Purism developers have actually identified and have worked on or uh, passed on some of the bug problems to the upstream. So yeah, I mean, we're going to have the, the, the GNOME Web is going to be uh, more rock solid, more stable, uh, less buggy thanks to Purism and uh, the Librem 5 phone. And I think that's awesome. So messaging has been improved. Um, call logs have been implemented in SQ Lite. You're gonna be able to back up your SQ Lite data uh, from your phone, which is pretty cool. You can store that in the cloud if you want. Uh, I'm in my personal cloud, I'm storing mine. So they've also added encryption for XMPP chats, chat messages, chat sessions. I don't know what the proper term is for that, um, but it's pretty cool. And they actually have, um, you're gonna be able to see a padlock symbol in the uh, message bar, and it's going to indicate whether the um, whether the chat is actually encrypted or not. This device is actually like really focused on privacy, which is like a big selling point for the device, obviously. So the modem won't have access to your microphone or your speakers unless you're in a call. That is like such a genius idea. Like I would have never thought that that would have been an, an, an attack vector, um, but like, holy cow. So basically your pulse audio server, your pulse audio daemon is going to connect to the modem when you have a call coming in or when you're making a call. And then it's going to shut off the connection between the modem um, after the, after the call's over. Oh, that's so, so cool to me. Oh my God. That's such a great idea. Uh, but then let's talk about some of the other stuff. A lot of the uh, core things going on with the, with the development kit 
uh, are drivers. So they've included the drivers for the, the camera in this thing, in the dev kit image. And that's really cool because then they had the dev kit take a selfie uh, in, in the mirror. And I think that that's really cool. I don't know why they're not using that more in their marketing. Get on that, guys. Uh, I mean, including that in your marketing materials, be like the world's first selfie, phone selfie selfie. I don't know. I think that's cool. <laughs> Work on the graphics stack is also coming along and that's kind of the whole hook of this video, right? I'm really excited about this. Basically what's going on is they have the, uh, the GC 7000 GPU. And basically what's happening is that the Etnaviv driver for this thing has now been included in Mesa. And so they've been able to port Quake 2 over and uh, they're able to play the game. There's footage of the game being played on the dev kit. Um, that's really exciting to me. Uh, as someone who appreciates Linux gaming, I'm I'm uh, stoked about that. But yeah, I'm really excited about this. The the Librem 5, I think it has a ton of potential. And I've actually enjoyed watching uh, this YouTube channel called Hackers Game. Um, Hackers Game has a dev kit and they've actually like uh, documented their experience with it. If you have a channel about the Librem 5 or if you have a dev kit and you're like blogging about it, let me know down in the comments because I really, really want to find out about this thing. I want more and more information as much as I can get. I, I really, I'm, I'm lusting for more information about the, the Librem 5. So I'll take anything I can get at this point. But I think that's going to do it for now. I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that they're going to be ready on time? What features do you think are missing that they need to implement? Or, or are you excited or as excited as I am about the Libra 5. Let me know in the comments. You can also hit me up on Twitter at the Linux Gamer. I'm also on Mastodon at gbryant at Libram.1. So you know that I am not, um, uh, what's the, what's the word? Uh, biased. Because the Libram stuff I'm a big fan of. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I'm also doing a QA and a uh, this next week or week and a half from now. So uh, if you have a comment, if you have a, a question you want to ask, um, leave it in the comments below and use the hashtag QA. I'm also going to be posting a, a community post on YouTube and on Twitter. So if you want to have your question read, oh, it's also on the forums, forum.heavyelement.io. So if you want to have your question read, have me answer your question, let me know down in the comments, on the forums, on Twitter, on the community post here on YouTube. Um, I'm very excited about it. I think it's going to be a good time. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon, or you can pick up a t-shirt. There's a link down below. But no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, The Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.